so one thing I wanted to point out that I didn't show in the disassembly video is how to remove these tapered gibs. Um, the dovetail on one end is wider than the other. Uh, this is, happens to be the top and this happens to be the bottom and this is my z-axis. And the gib here is tapered as well. It's, it's thinner here and thicker here. And when you screw this side in, it increases the tension. And if you move it this way, adjust it this way, it decreases the uh, amount of tension you have on it. There is a notch side, and then this side is just square. In order to remove it, uh, unscrew the adjustment screw here, and just remove that. And then from the bottom, just take a screwdriver and tap your gib and that will allow you to slide it out. I just wanted to point out, just in case you were not aware of how to remove the gibs or how the gibs a look and how they actually work. All right guys, pretty straightforward here. I've got an eighth inch drill bit and I'm just drilling out uh, the holes so that the oil will reach the grooves that we put into the saddle in the last video. Uh, here is the x-axis here and now I'm working on the z-axis just two grooves in it I'm drilling through the side on the z-axis here to put a M8 uh, push to connect fitting for the oil for the oil tubes I'm using an H drill bit here and then I'm going to come back and tap it with an M8 by 1.25 uh, thread which happens just happens to be the same size as the gib locks on the other side so I just kept it all the same. This particular hole that I'm drilling here is for the Y. You need to be careful on that hole and make sure you give space for these X table to move in and out otherwise you end up breaking it off again I'm just tapping here I had to drill through here in order to access the previous hole through the top there and I'll come back and put a plug in there um, now I'm tapping that for fitting I could have put the fitting on the side however I thought putting it on the top was a lot nicer so I went that route. I wanted to keep all the supply lines on one side because that's where I wanted to put my bracketry on the right side and my all my fittings. So I'm drilling through the front here or the back here, excuse me. Uh, this is to uh, get the back side of the X and tapping it again this is M8 by 1.25 uh, the casting is pretty coarse so most of these drilling and tapping goes fairly easily see the hole there going through there again tapping M8 by 1.25 I'm marking for the gibs and I'm drilling here I'm just center drilling and now I've, I've put my table at a 30 degree angle so that when I drill through the hole will stay in the center of the gib uh, if you just drill 90 degrees it'll be won't be in the center and then I came back and just took a bigger drill bit all and right made a chamfer. so what I've done is I've bored holes through here and I then I just took a 7 16 drill bit and made a little countersink on each side and um, that just allows more adjustment in order for the oil to be able to actually access this hole I don't really think I'm going to have that much of adjustment um, so I think that'll work just fine um, I could have machined a groove in here but I didn't want to do that another thing I've noticed with these gibs and, and really I don't know what the correct answer is 
uh, for those of you that have a little bit more uh, knowledge in this area please feel free to comment but I've noticed on these Gibbs one side is completely smooth and the other side it looks like they've scraped it or ground it however you want to uh, state that and there's little peaks and valleys and you can just fill it with your hand now this is the side that's going to ride up against the the way and the only reason I think they did that they've done it on all three of my Gibbs one side's completely smooth one side's got this scrape and I think the reason behind that is the lubricant gets into these little valleys and provides uh, lubrication along the way uh, also this is just my theory if you have two completely flat surfaces like so it's going to take more force and more effort to get it to start moving before it actually frees up and that's going to cause backlash so in my mind having that tight but having all those peaks and valleys the whole surface here is not actually glued together it's just the high spots and that allows for easier movement that's just my theory on it so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wet sand all these little corners and just get them nice and smooth so there's no binding and then just lightly hit this so that I don't have any kind of burr where I did my chamfer there but I'm not going to try to smooth it out like this side. I'm just going to leave it. Uh, I think that's the route I'm going to go. Um, I did the Z-axis here. You can see I've left that. All right, so I picked up some Mobile One uh, Vactra oil. This is number two. This is uh, ISO 68 oil, which... After doing some research, I found that this is just SAA 20 oil. Uh, however, it does have some uh, different kind of agents in there, some thickening agents to help stick to the ways. So, I suggest you go ahead and just pick this up. Um, it's not really too expensive. I found this at Enco for $18. Um, I've seen it as high as $30 a gallon. Uh, they had this on sale. It's a really good deal. So if you don't have any and you need to pick some up, check out Enco. I don't have my one-shot oiler hooked up yet, and I'm trying to assemble this stuff. So a quick tip. Uh, you can use some handy 3-in-1 oil just to get some lubrication on your ways. Or if you have one of these nasal sprayers, just pop the cap out fill it up with some whey oil maybe open this hole up just a little bit and uh, then you got a nice little oiler you can use to squirt some oil likewise you can take one of these uh, contact solution bottles some saline solution uh, you can't screw this cap off you have to pop it off with a screwdriver but it has a nice little spout on it with the lid and uh, you can fill this up with some whey oil and this is a good size oiler you can use this for threading or whatever uh, you've seen me use this little flip top bottle with some I use this as my threading this is just uh, motor oil and kerosene mixture I just thought I'd share this quick tip all right, so I've got my fittings in on my saddle. Uh, this is for the X. It's going to come up through here. It's also going to come out through this hole and take care of this dovetail. We have this fitting here. It's going to come out here, take care of this side, and also come out through this hole and take care of the gib through this hole here and then get these dovetails we have going to have the lines coming in through here 
and it's going to go into a manifold I'm still waiting on those it's going to come through here go through over to this one go into a manifold come up to here go into here come up to here and catch this ball nut and then come around and come up and get the front side pretty straightforward uh, these are M8 fittings uh, one thing I do want to point out is make sure that you if you do the same type configuration make sure that you keep this hole uh, at least a half inch or so away from this edge because when the X table slides in there you want to make sure you have clearance so you don't break this off uh, what else okay so I drilled down through here but I also had to drill through the side here so that I could get the gib here and then of course there's a hole in here and then I just came back and put a plug in here uh, this is just a set screw of course thread lock and then I put set screws in all these holes that I'm not using uh, I may use them to bolt something up later but if so I can just take those out they're just set screws with a little Loctite and this one right here I'm going to try to use to mount my manifold with some kind of bracketry so I left that one out all right so now that we have that the Z I've already put my fittings in the Z head and got that mounted so that wraps up part two uh, in the next video we'll actually get the fittings installed careful with these fittings they will break thanks for watching the videos if you have any suggestions or questions please feel free to comment thumbs up if you like the video please subscribe and most importantly be safe